All right, let's keep going. All right, and then make them mad at me. It's easy. It's easy. Ugh. It's science class, the, si the class of science, chemistry actually. Now everyone, today we start labs and you need to split into pairs. Psst, hey, you hear a very familiar voice. Psst, what? Psst, let's be lab partners, okay? Psst, okay. Bobby slips up next to you when the, part the, when the lab partners are chosen. So, what do you think? Fetal pig or frog? It's got to be one of those. There are a lot of boxes that look almost like small animal coffins set up for the lab. Um... Go for the frog. I think it'll be frogs. It feels like frog weather. The moon was as big as a pizza pie. I noticed that. Also, our teacher kind of looks like a frog. Miss Crail, I'll have you know my resemblance to a frog is exactly why I always choose fetal pig. The teacher slams a box down on your desk and opens it dramatically to reveal the dead fetal pig. Bobby lets out a shriek. Everyone laughs. Ugh, it's horrible. I'll take notes. You you do the, the cutting. Gross, but okay. You better take really good notes. You may have to describe it to me too when I can't look. Between the two of you, you managed to do the lab pretty well. That was disgusting. But we made a good team. Sure did. Class ends. You only ended up getting a B- minus on the project. Eh, whatever. It's still neutral, but like, you know, it's not great, is it? It's not good. Well, you know what? I might actually make this. I didn't think I would, but I might actually make it. Oops, I did not mean to do that. I'm so sorry. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? They're ish, ish happy with me now. Okay. Nice. What do I need? I need intelligence. To be smart. Come on, give me something good. Oh, okay. You know what, I'll take it. Oh fuck, I didn't mean to do that. That's that's really bad luck. Okay, that was that was my bad. After PE class, you head for your locker but stop in the bathroom. You hit, enter the girls' room to find Wendy alone and looking upset. She hears you enter and quickly turns on the faucet to make a sound. Hey Valky. Hi. You want to say something, but you have to take care of business first. Wendy doesn't wait to give you a chance. She heads out the door. As the school day ends, you pack up your books and happily step outside. You're lucky that you get a ride home from your parents who are on a break. Wendy waits alone as kids push onto crowded buses and into family cars. You step over to Wendy by the curb. Hey Wendy, you taking the bus? I might walk home instead of riding with those bully mother. Ch are they that mean? Duh, you know they are. I just get sick of dealing with it. Sick of it. Did you ever see Class of 1992? I wish, you forgot my parents still don't let me see R-rated films. Still? Anyway, it's about these cyber- what, how old am I now? <laughs> uh, still, it's about these cyber nerds who get picked on. Until they get bloody revenge on the school with traps and computers. Hey, please don't do that. What? Don't have a cow, man. I'm just talking about the cool effects. You look at Wendy's serious face. She's going through a lot in school. You make a firm decision. Wendy, my parents will give you a ride with us. Oh, don't worry about it. Wendy looks at the packed bus ahead. But if that's cool with your parents. Wendy finds out it's more than cool and you both have a fun ride home. Valky, it's time you learned about the two most important things. Knowledge and happiness. Those are also important, yes. But what I wanted to talk about is this. A good handshake and a nice smile. Teach me, master. I've been waiting my whole life to hear about this. Let's go. Alright, listen closely. When you shake someone's hand, make sure you have a strong grip. But not too strong. Don't make them think you're trying to intimidate. And also, make a wide smile, but not too wide, or else they'll think you're unprofessional. Remember these rules and you will be successful in life. I'm not sure what I expected, but I can't help but feel a little disappointed. Raise my charm. Fine. I really need to make them proud of me. Honestly, this is gonna get rough. This is, this is whatever. Like, I think I'm gonna be okay because I prepared a lot in the in the beginning. But like, my parents gonna fucking hate me. It's weird that taking a trip with your parents does not make them like you. <laughs> oh. 
It's very weird. I mean, desperate, desperate times call for desperate measures again. I mean, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna buy that. From nine to five, I got an achievement that says that. I really did not want to spend that much money, but genuinely, I'm like a little bit of a loss. Oh, the internet's scaly. Mm. One, two, three, and one, two, three. Ooh. Genuinely, this hurts. Oh, a teenage trip to the mall brought about by a request from Flick to meet her at the food court. Oh, hey, food court is on me. Come on. She buys your meal, though she doesn't get anything for herself. Mm. Glad you could make it. I'm in such a better mood today. I am a new... I, I am me, a new. How are you, though? Like, you doing okay? You need to complain? I'm fine. That's what everyone says, especially when they're doing terrible. In this case, it's true. If you say so. Thanks for putting up with me at my worst last time, by the way. You aren't that bad. Yes, but normally I'm totally awesome. You don't want anything to eat? Oh, I already ate, liar. She gives a weird look. You don't know if you believe her. Besides, can't ruin my girlish figure. You know, gotta look good for swimsuit season. Haha. <laughs> just then, Flick's phone buzzes. Uh, just a moment. She picks the phone up. Oh, Tammy. Hey, I... Oh, yeah? Yeah. Her face falls. This is such unfair BS. Really? Oh, come on, Tammy. Yeah, I know. Tammy, you know what? She hangs her phone up. It buzzes again. She puts it away in her purse. Uh, everything okay? No, I'm going to go. Stay. Tell me what's going on. Complain. My mum has no... My mum has no... You have to know already. Okay. She's the host of Chatty Cathy. She mentioned my brother's heart condition on the air. He has it hard enough already, and now... The vultures are circling already. I... He's gonna need someone right now. I'm sure he'll get it way worse. She's so selfish. We'll hang out more soon. I'm gonna go see if he's okay. My mum only thinks about her career. It's so... Okay, gotta go. Flick gives you a quick hug and rushes off. See, I want this to be my wife. Okay, well, I'm trying my best. <laughs> On your way to class, suddenly out of nowhere, Flick grabs your wrist. I need to talk to you. There's a weirdly desperate look in her face. Uh, I mean, yeah. Gay panic. <laughs> Even though the class bell rings, she yanks you out of sight. I, I hate fake. Alright, uh, look, I'm gonna rant here, like, just go off, okay? Just let me do this. My mum and her stupid talk show is ruining my life. Chatty Cathy, half a million viewers daily. She goes and she tells everyone, and, her, and now she feels- Everyone feels so bad for Humphrey. Humphrey is my brother, he's got- his heart isn't great. Those vampires on the cheer team, they're just so fake, I hate it, I hate the fake. And everyone else coming out of the woodwork, telling me how strong my parents are, how sad they are for Humphrey. It isn't real, none of it is real. Are you real? She looks at you so hard for a moment, you're afraid she's gonna shatter like that. I feel like if I do this, I'm gonna do it. You pull her into a kiss, Flick shoves you back. Whoa, too real, too real. I, uh, I didn't. <laughs> she can't seem to stop laughing, then suddenly she grabs your wrist. Oh wow, thank you, but uh, I'm not, uh, girls are not. That was, you are real, huh? <laughs> I like to think so. I'm sorry. Sorry, I, uh... No, it's okay, uh, friends? You nod softly. Still, that's, um, well, huh. Can't say you're not real now, can I? <laughs> Guess not. What were we talking about again? I don't even know. Okay, so she's not gay. Well, Are the women in this game just perpetually alone? Forever? There's no dudes. There's literally no dude. I'm so confused. I don't even know. I'm always complaining about my life. I just... You might be the only real friend I have right now. Thanks for, um... She doesn't know how to phrase it. She works through it slowly. Thanks for being you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks for being a massive lesbo. <laughs> she smiles at that. We are going to get in so much trouble if we don't get back to class. And we should do that. Thanks. She gives you one last hug before she heads off to class. That was funny. I, I liked how that was handled. 
Uh, exam readiness. Still shit, huh? Hmm. Okay, well, I want to go down this way then. Oh, Jesus. Excuse me, I wish for charm. I wish I wish for charm. Why are you not giving me charm? This is a bit like bullshit. Like the like seriously, this RNG is like a little bit bullshit. Oh, well. <laughs> Anything else I'm not missing before I go? All right. Charm, charm, charm. Charm. Oh, fuck. I hate those brain farts. All right. You finally made it to Friday and the magical weekend to Rome. After your parents have proof you actually finished your homework. That makes you think about Wendy and her experiences at school. You find yourself with a little crush on Wendy. I do not have a crush on Wendy. Like, I did not ask for this. You don't want to open up too much or ruin a friendship, so you make a plan. Either you ask her to go for a nice evening walk in the park to talk, or you forget about it and just go bowling together as pals. Go bowling. I don't have a crush on her. I'm very sorry. I just don't. Like, she doesn't seem very nice. <laughs> You're surprised Wendy is so into bowling because she hates school PE, but it turns out you don't need two hands to bowl and Wendy is a pro. She ignores the teens and adults who stare at her prosthetic, but Wendy always talks patiently to the kids who ask about her arm. And after she scores major strikes, the crowd applaud her, Wendy blushes. Of course, she beats your sad score, but nobody cares because you had a blast. Despite all the pain and drama, sometimes being a teenager is cool. Now I'm bummed. Why is Flick... Why is Flick not gay? Why would they... Where are all the dudes? Gen genuinely, just just genuinely asking. I'm really confused. I'm gonna have to look into this. All right. Uh, the moment you set foot into the bowling alley, before you can even smell the lane oil, hey, little sprout! It takes a moment to realize he's talking to you. Little sprout, get over here. We need a fourth. You look around, confused, hoping he means someone else. Yeah, you, little sprout. He yanks you over to the bowling lane with two other middle-aged guys. Well, this isn't. I don't like this. So Ralph hasn't shown, but we need a fourth, and this is a league game, so you know. The other two men nod. Other team is like four Ralphs, so all we need you to do is group up and toss the ball. The other two men nod. That's Jim and that's Tim. They don't talk much. The other two men nod. People call me the lad. Now, you don't have a ball, so here, take one of mine. He shoves a bowling ball into your hand. It looks like he has at least four. Don't throw if someone is throwing in the next lane next to you. In, in the lane next to you. Don't cross the foul line. He points at the line in front of the lane. Don't make noise when other people are going and don't drink. Don't eat or drink in the bowling area. Anything else? Uh, smoking is okay, so you got any extra smokes on you? He looks at you, hopefully. You shake your head no very slowly. Darn. Anyone else got any smokes? The two men shake their head no like you. Darn. So just roll the ball down the lane and try to hit the pins. We'll do the rest. And so the game commences. Four bowlers dressed in matching pink uniforms line up next to the group you're with. Look who it is, it's the pink posse. At first you think he's making fun of them, but then you see that, that, that their team name is pink, pink posse. The team you're on seems to be the lane lads. Okay lads, let's bowl. You do fine, the rest of the lane lads put up scores well over 200. Despite you taking their average down, the lane lads win. Hey Lil Sprout, thanks, you're a lifesaver. We should play again sometime. Wanna go join me and the other lads for drinks, Sprout? You stare at him, silent, judging. Oh, okay, suit yourself. The lane lads file out of the bowling alley. Oh, wait. What the hell is this? Pride? I can get- I can buy pride points? Alright. One extraordinarily quick question while I check my Discord. 
okay, that's not very interesting. Okay, so now we want to be a video game tester just for some money. I don't have any action points. What happened to them all? Oh damn, I'm so not gonna make a- I'm, I'm not gonna raise my charm enough. I, I don't see that happening. Alright. We're gonna disappoint parents again. Uh, one, two, three. Disappoint parents, disappoint parents. Uh, one, two. Oh, well, we're so gonna be in trouble. Bobby asked you to meet her at the local music club. When you arrive, you don't see her. Hello, everyone. She's up on stage. It looks like they're doing an open mic night. I'm Bobby Grail, no relation to the Holy Grail. Well, other than the whole gaining eternal life if you drink from me. That part we have in common. You hear a few people in the audience snicker. Not a lot, though. Bobby seems unperturbed, though. The crazy thing about the Holy Grail and the round table is that they had a seat for the Grail. Like, a whole seat for a cup. I mean, I know it's an important cup, but someone in the audience shouts fatty, and this gets a bunch of real laughs. Woo! Keep going! You clap loudly. I just hope if they're keeping a chair for the grail, it understands how much they like it. Obviously, a touch rattled. She finishes the already short set a bit sooner than normal. Uh, it was terrible up there. You're great up there. I'd never even thought about your last name before. Oh, I think about it too much. My mum likes to call me her little chalice, which is super weird. This was my first time trying something like this. Thanks for showing up. Let me buy you dinner. Bobby buys you dinner and spends most of the time talking about herself, though that's normal. See, why are all my friends selfish as fuck? Oh, look at my, look at my, look at my health. Okay, it got better. After the weekend, you're not ready for Monday, but it's not your choice. You're also not excited about going to PE class. It's too early to exercise. Your grumbling, shuffling classmates move around you like zombies. Except for Wendy, who heads in the opposite direction of PE class. You step in front of Wendy. Hey, Wendy. Uh, I had fun on Friday going out bowling and stuff. Yeah, so did I, but I gotta go now. Don't tell me you're cutting class. Okay, I won't. So where are you going? Cutting class. What? Why? You hate PE that much? I hate square dancing that much, and those mean girls hate on me. I don't want to deal with the boys acting weird and the girls laughing. They won't when I'm around. Thanks, but you won't always be around, and I can take care of myself. What am I supposed to do here? Isn't isn't telling her to face her fears? I'll support her. You're right, and hanging out in the library is better than square dancing. Hell yeah, I can read horror magazines and design some new makeup effects. You worry that Wendy is not even going to graduate at this point. You don't want to sound like her parents, but you wish she cared. Wendy can be a difficult person to convince if she's not interested, but you know she needs the support of a friend, or whatever you two are now. Hey, you know you can also use that extra time to study and do homework. Oh, thanks, Mum and Dad. Well, get decent grades and you can finally join the drama club. Yeah, I think I'm already in drama club. It's called high school. I know. Okay, I don't want to be late to PE. The coach won't let me out. See you later. Have fun doing the hokey pokey or however you squares dance. You actually see Wendy laugh as she heads off towards the library. Alright. Mm. Alright, I'm starting to have doubts about this. I didn't read that, but that's fine. <laughs> this is already going to be fucking terrible. Oh, that, great. I just wasted that completely. Whatever. We're done. My parents, my parents are just going to have to be fucking disappointed. There's not, there's not a lot I can do about it. Bobby is hanging out in your room. She seems more apprehensive than normal and oddly quiet. What's up, Bobby? I need your help. Like last time, but way more important. She tosses you a playbook. Is this for the school play? The musical. I'm trying out for the lead. The scene I'm going to do is on page 36. Fine, fine. Okay, page 36. Ahem. Hello, Madam Higgins. It's St. Fallow's Day again. Oh, tis it. It is. You read lines for a few hours with her. Mm-hmm. Mm. 
Okay, I have money now. Let's, um... Let's do a big one. Let's do a big one. Do a big one. Not that big. This big. Alright, let's do it. Let's do it. One. Two, three, four. Uh. One, two. And then. One, two. <laughs> Flick has invited you to the di uh, diner that has quickly become your place. Okay, if we're going to be like best friends, let me give you the whole breakdown. My dad is an investment banker. He travels a lot. My mom has a talk show. Everyone in town knows her. It's horrible. My brother, he's great. He's the best. He, but he was born with a hole in his heart and he has a rare blood type. And me, I'm basically perfect other than that. And you have bulimia. In middle school, I think I took cheer team or national. Looks like we might do it again here in high school. So I'm like, you know, a star. She gives you a cocky grin as the waitress drops off your food. As per normal, she only gets a milkshake. You never seem to eat. What? I mean, I, uh... She looks out the window. Guess if I want you to be real, I should be real. I, um... I, I don't eat a lot. How little is don't eat a lot? It started out just to stay as light as possible for flying, but I've been getting dizzy a lot of practice. That's how we met, so maybe it was fate. Look, Flick. I don't need a lecture. You've seen what illness does to people, to families, with your brother. I said I didn't need a- Your health matters. You matter. This isn't. I need to control something, okay? She slams her fist down on the table so hard everything jumps. She can't meet your eyes after that. Her hands slowly rest in her lap. Well, I just lost the moral high ground, huh? It's not about that. I know. If it's affecting your health. I know. Look, I'm- I'm- She starts laughing. <laughs> I was about to just walk out of here like a child, just march away. Oh, I'm so immature. It's hard, though. Eating feels bad now. Maybe just some fries or a salad? Okay. Yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna be like, oh, maybe, maybe it was fate. Like, she already rejected me. I'm not gonna talk, call, call fate into, into it here. She orders herself a small salad. She barely picks at it, but she does eat a little. Don't stare, okay? It makes it hard. I feel so fat. You're not. Still feel it. Just don't stare. Okay, I won't. Life, am I right? Life. Life indeed. What do you even want from it? In, like, what sense? You know, tomorrow, years from now, what do you... Kids. I want lots of kids. Oh, that's why you don't want to be with me, I see. Because <laughs> I don't have a dick. <laughs> really? Yes, I want so many kids. I want to smother them, too. I want to be in their lives. Not a homemaker. I mean, maybe, but... I want my life to be lots of kids. I want to see them grow up. I want to see them hate me and move on and disappoint me and surprise me. Boys, girls, whatever. I just want them and I want to be there for them. They come from me and I'm there for them and... It must sound pretty stupid, huh? Yeah, I get it. I love kids. Good, I mean, we are kids, sort of, still. Speak for yourself. Fine, I will. I still am a kid in a lot of ways, but I love kids. I want so many. Flick sets her hands on yours. I'm glad I have at least one real person in my life. Can you stop giving me mixed signals? Stop it with the tender touches. She smiles a genuine smile. You spend a bit more time talking, but eventually she heads home to hang out with her brother. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, that wasn't so bad. One day at school, you see Wendy sneaking around holding a big bag. There's obviously something in it. You notice a mischievous grin on Wendy's face. You're curious what she's up to and decide to follow her. Unfortunately for you, she's pretty quick and you lose her in the school's corridors. Oh well, guess you'll find out soon enough what she, what it is she's up to. Black holes. Mm. Hey, my exam readiness. Look, if I can just get it up a bit more, I'll be happy. Yo, they're just... They're just... Made me so disappointed. Uber empathy. Charm, charm, charm. Charm, charm. A 
still don't think I'm gonna make it. <laughs> I've done what I can. One of your parents is reading the newspaper. You know, people generally find you more attractive when you're fit. It takes you a moment to realize they're staring right at you when you say that. I do my best. Thanks for looking out for me. Oh, I was just making conversation. Yeah, thanks for calling me fat. Do you want me to have a problem like Flick does? Because that's how you do it. They go back to reading the newspaper, but they clearly were not just making conversation. Thanks for just everything. <laughs> Oh, thank you for stressing me out. I guess no, I guess you can only mold your character so much. Or did I miss something? Did I just automatically make my character a lesbian? I really don't understand. Okay, I have money again. Go back to the cafe. I can get some more money doing this. And then give it all the way back to them. <laughs> this is the only way I feel like I can survive right now. Alright. Sketch. finish the internet and then mm, two and then a desperate <gasps> oh she must be with her brother it's not her she's not <laughs> a desperate call from flick gets you to visit the hospital you came thank you so much a massive hug catches you off guard that's my brother, he needs a donor, a whole new heart, and, and she buries her head in your shoulder and the tears are hot and wet. You just hug her tightly until she stops crying. My parents aren't even in town, my dad is out on business, and my mum, she's off on a tour in Canada for her show, so it's just me here for him, school, cheer, my brother, it's, I just, I don't know if I can do it all. I, I've been thinking, thinking about quitting the cheer squad to spend more time with him. He's so amazing, he's such a happy kid most of the time. Claims he loves going to the hospital because he gets to play as many video games as he wants. She's smiling, but her eyes are so sad. Once though, once he told me he didn't want to die alone. My parents, they want me to focus on school and cheer, to let the doctors deal with my brother. I really don't know how to deal with any of this, um... She's clearly embarrassed about what she's about to say. What do you think I should do? This is genuinely the hardest, the hardest question that we've come across so far, because she's still young. She shouldn't have to parent. She sh she's talking about how she loves kids, right? She's still a kid herself, but she loves kids. But she still needs time to be a kid. She can't just stop being a kid. You know how single parents work all the time, and if they have like the the oldest kid, basically ends up parenting the younger siblings. This is this is the vibe I'm getting. But if she loves kids and she loves her brother, then maybe she should take care of her brother. But she should take care of herself as well because she's just not very well. No, take care of yourself. It's hard, but your parents are right. If you just live for your brother, what are you even doing? I know, I know. Just two weeks ago, I got really dizzy and fell down in cheer practice. He, he said he was worried about me. Can you believe it? The poor kid said he was worried about me. He's so young and full of being amazing, but you're right, I'm not his keeper. Besides, nationals have come- I don't- I didn't really mean this, like... I- I chose wrong. I chose wrong. I thought I was telling her to choose herself. As in, like, take care of yourself. Like, you need to work on your eating problem. Oh well, besides, nationals coming up and I want to go all the way. She hugs you again, thank you for being here. She hugs you for a very long time. Sorry. Nerd. I got an achievement, nerd. You see Bobby crying as she approaches the school. What's wrong? Nothing, nothing. Just my dad threw out my playbooks. He... She sobs. He thinks I'm... I just... Ugh, I hate him. Um, was there a reason? Yeah, but not a good one. He thinks it's a waste of time and, like, people will make fun of me for... She motions to her general shape. Oh. 
It wasn't so tactful. She sniffles again. Class. I got a class. She heads off, sniffling. Well... I guess that's so late in the game to go to the hospital and try to become like a nurse or something, right? Alright. Anyone here to talk to? Wow, that's a lot. Oh, I feel like this, this actually contributes to this more than anything. I don't know, I'm trying my best and we'll see you in the next one.